Coming up on today's Airborne, the NTSB apologizes for an embarrassing news release. The Navy executes a historic unmanned carrier trap. And ANN plans extensive air venture coverage. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The NTSB has issued a formal apology and is blaming a summer intern who, quote, acted outside the scope of his authority and confirming an erroneous release of fictitious names of the pilots of the downed Asiana Flight 214. The names released to and reported by dozens of media outlets nationwide, not including ANN, were not only erroneous, but sophomoric and laden with racist overtones. Don't believe us? Just search YouTube and you'll find a number of videos of the original reporting and the subsequent apologies that followed. The NTSB official statement says, quote, the NTSB apologizes for inaccurate and offensive names that were mistakenly confirmed as those of the pilots of Asiana Flight 214, which crashed at San Francisco International Airport on July 6. Earlier today, in response to an inquiry from a media outlet, a summer intern acted outside the scope of his authority when he erroneously confirmed the names of the flight crew on the aircraft. The NTSB does not release or confirm the names of crew members or people involved in transportation accidents to the media. We work hard to ensure that only appropriate factual information regarding an investigation is released and deeply regret today's incident. Appropriate actions will be taken to ensure that such a serious error is not repeated. The X-47B Unmanned Combat Air System Demonstrator completed its first-ever carrier-based arrest and landing on board USS George H.W. Bush off the coast of Virginia last Wednesday, July 10th. Wednesday's demonstration was the first time a tailless, unmanned autonomous aircraft landed on a modern aircraft carrier. The Navy says this test marks an historic event for naval aviation that Navy leaders believe will impact the way the Navy integrates manned and unmanned aircraft on the carrier flight deck in the future. Secretary of the Navy Ray Mabus said, quote, We have certainly come a long way in the 102 years since Eugene Ellie made the first arrested landing aboard an aircraft carrier. Naval aviators have always been at the forefront of operational and tactical innovation, and today was no exception. The clock is ticking down rapidly towards the greatest air show in the land. And we have some great plans in the works for our coverage of Oshkosh this year. And we want you to be a part of it. First, we've undertaken the establishment of a long-term presence for ANN at Whitman Regional Airport. We purchased a portable building and have gotten the blessing of EAA to make it our permanent home at the airport. We'll still be in our normal spot near the Air Venture Press headquarters, putting us in a central location for all the activities that go on during the week. Once again this year, we'll be offering a daily video recap of Air Venture on Airborne. If you're not able to come to Oshkosh, Airborne, hosted by yours truly, will be the next best thing to being there. And if you're in a rush, our daily audio aerocast will surely keep you up to date with Air Venture's major breaking stories. As always, our extensive team of journalists, videographers, and stringers will be combing the grounds for the most interesting and fun stories from the show each day. ANN will attend every major news briefing at the show so that you can stay up to date on the latest and greatest the industry has to offer. And you yourself can help by dropping us a note letting us know what you think is important to the industry and what you may be bringing to AirVenture this year. From an unusual or classic airplane to thoughts on aviation policy, we want to know what's on your mind. Be sure to stop by our new facility at Whitman Regional Airport this summer and say hello. In the first of a series of surprises, we expect before or during Oshkosh, PS Engineering has announced the PAC-15EX with an initial offering of this integrated audio system by GRT Avionics. 
The GRT HXR Electronic Flight Instrumentation System is a significant improvement over the GRT Horizon I series of EFIS systems. Through the PAC 15EX audio panel intercom, the HXR is capable of controlling several models of transponders and other devices through its screen controllable remote interface. Among its features and capabilities includes a four place hi fi stereo Intel box intercom, wire telephone interface, two stereo music input changes, and the ability to place the audio panel into split mode, a function that can help offload some pilot radio communications work. Lisa Airplanes will be at Oshkosh again this year, the second consecutive year that they will participate at the show. But that wasn't a foregone conclusion. Tom Patton reports. Lisa Zakoya is called an amphibious ski plane with the ability to operate from land, snow, or water. The prototype turned a lot of heads at Oshkosh last year, but the company ran into financial difficulties and entered receivership about the time Oshkosh 2012 was ending. The company now says it has been through its, quote, economic turbulences and said in a news release that they have restructured, emerged from receivership in April, and have restarted activity on the Akoya program. The French company says its full staff is focused on preparations for production of the multi-access airplane and its certification program. Lisa Airplanes calls Air Venture a must for the aviation industry and will be introducing what it says are Akoya's, quote, innovations and their multiple assets during this year's show. But the airplane, which was something of a darling at Oshkosh last year, will not be on display. The company says it will be staying in France for continued testing. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. You're watching Airborne. More when we come back in just a moment. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website or podcast, drop us an email to news by at aero news.net. As the last man to walk on the moon, he belongs to a unique fraternity. And soon, Eugene Jean Cernan will belong to another as a recipient of the MBAA's Meritorious Service to Aviation Award. The NBAA will present the award during a presentation at the Association's 2013 Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition. A career U.S. Navy aviator, Cernan flew into space three times over his 13 years with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, first serving as the pilot of the Gemini 9 mission in 1966, then as a lunar module pilot of Apollo 10, and as commander of Apollo 17, NASA's final manned moon mission in 1972. NBAA President and CEO Ed Bolin says, quote, Gene Cernan often talks about the yearning restlessness that he's experienced since leaving the moon's Taurus Latro Valley. And over the past 40 years, he's channeled that energy into tirelessly promoting aviation interests, including business aviation and humanity's continuing presence in space. Pilot Chip Yates, the founder of Flight of the Century Incorporated, will attempt to break his current world speed record of 202 miles per hour in an electric airplane in front of a crowd at Mather Airport on Saturday, October 5, 2013 at the California Capitol Air Show. 
At only 13 years old, Yates saved $50 and convinced his parents to invest an additional $50 in order to buy and rebuild his first motorcycle. In 2012, Yates adapted his water-cooled 258 horsepower electric motor and controller system to an aircraft designed by Burt Rutan and used it to establish a world speed record for electric powered aircraft of 202 miles per hour. It sounds so easy. Just attach a big bunch of helium balloons to a lawn chair and drift with the wind. But Kent Couch says beware the FAA and the high price of helium. Some in the ballooning community, though, say beware of Kent Couch. Couch, a gas station owner and craft beer seller from Bend, Oregon, is one of a small cadre of lawn chair balloonists. He made headlines last year when he made a tandem flight with Iraqi adventurer Fareed Lofta. But that flight cost Couch $4,500 in fines from the FAA, which said that the pair flew without valid pilot licenses on unregistered aircraft that were not certified as airworthy. Couch says his attorney negotiated the fine down to $1,000 and that he paid by certified check using money from a sponsor. But the FAA says it has not received the payment. Fareed was also fined, but he is no longer in the United States. Couch also says that while helium carries him aloft, its cost is keeping him grounded. He said that the gas is five times more expensive than what it was when he made his first flight in 2006. Couch said this was the first time he has been fined. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week. And it's quite entertaining to ride, apparently. Here, hold my beer. Believe it or not, now you can be a couch potato and enjoy the great outdoors all with an aviation twist. I'm not sure there's much more to be said. Better you just watch this week's AVW for yourself. Find it on YouTube by searching for Epic Couch Drifting. The Toronto-based Aerovelo team, led by Dr. Todd Reichert, pilot and chief engineer, and Cameron Robertson, co-chief engineer, have won the prestigious Sikorsky Prize. The American Helicopter Society and Sikorsky Aircraft presented the Sikorsky Prize for the flight of a human-powered helicopter at a special ceremony this past Thursday at the Soccer Center in Vaughan, Ontario, where the record-breaking flight was conducted on June 13th. The team, comprised largely of students at the University of Toronto, beat the 33-year-old challenge last month, flying its Atlas above 3 meters and hovering for approximately 64 seconds within a 10-meter square box. The AHS first issued the Human Powered Flight Challenge in 1980. More than 20 human powered helicopters have been designed and built since the competition began, though only a handful have gotten off the ground. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. And please remember, Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. Join us again this Friday for another edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.